Hello, I'm Kwame Shagan, and welcome to Felix's art channel. I'm very flattered to be asked to be a guest instructor. Uh, if you want to see how to do this landscape painting in sort of a impressionistic style, stand by, and we'll get into what you need uh, for the painting in a moment. But I do want to tell you folks that there are going to be points, especially once we get to the uh, trees and the landscape where I won't like it and I'll change it and as I'm doing it. I'm improvising it. And so if you like what you're doing, just keep it the way it is and it'll be beautiful. There are no mistakes and uh, cheers to Felix and let's get started. All right, here's what you will need for this painting. A mixing tool, very common, a number two fan brush, a number six filbert brush, a little one, it's kind of hard to tell, but a number 12 filbert. Some kind of really fine point. We may or may not use that. And also some kind of small flathead brush, maybe to get some detail in the water. But again, we may not use them. And if you don't have these brushes, uh, feel free to use obviously any kind of brush that you have. Um, we're not married to any of these brushes. So <clears throat> whatever you have. The, um, canvas that or palette i should say that i'm using is a paper palette you can get this on felix's website and it's actually pretty cool because when you're done you can just peel it off and throw it away instead of <clears throat> saving cardboard boxes and having to cut them up all the time which is uh, what i've always done but i like this this is really neat as far as the paints i'm going to be using acrylic paint these are some awesome paints that Felix was kind enough to send me, and you can get them on his webpage, you can see here. And one thing about them that I really liked was they were all sealed. So when you open them, you have to use something sharp to kind of open them, and the paint is fresh as opposed to something that dries out, and I like that. So we're going to be blending the paint in two parts uh, just because when I use acrylic, uh, it dries up on me and I don't want to be in a situation where I have to turn the seatbelt sign on here and then I'm like not having fun, you know. So I will do the sky in one portion and then uh, once we do the sky, then I'll come back and um, we'll blend the paint for the uh, trees and the landscape and so <clears throat> the sky is going to be a bunch of different blues I'm going to show you the paints I'm using but again if you don't have the exact blue feel free to substitute any kind of blue um, and you'll see it's very uh, freelancy and you really can't make any mistakes so Let's start with some Krulian blue. Maybe that much. When I first started painting, I would waste so much paint, it was absurd. This is some cobalt blue. It's a cool blue, I like that. Ultramarine, also known as French Ultramarine. I like that one. That one, that's the showstopper, is the ultramarine blue. <clears throat> There's some phthalo blue. Some titanium white. I like to put my white always kind of separate and a lot of it, I tend to use a lot of the white I'm blending a lot. And for those of you that are new to painting, blending is 
one of the funnest parts of it. It's uh, almost as fun as doing the actual painting itself because I always find when you blend uh, colors, they look better than when they come out of the tube. But maybe that's my ego saying that I did it and it's better, but I think it's better. Um, so <clears throat> that's this basically what you see here is the setup to our sky. And the general rule of thumb is we want the darker colors to be on the top and as we come down, uh, we'll lighten it up. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we'll start blending and I'm just trying to ponder, you know, if you wanna add different colors, like a red, an orange, a purple, please feel free to do that. Um, I have done, uh, if you, in these impressionistic style paintings, you know, you can really get crazy with the colors. On this one, I'm going to keep it more as a play on the blues, as I like to call it. And we'll, we'll have fun with the blues. And then when we get into the land, then we'll have a play on the greens. And then we'll, then we'll get some red and orange in there too, to, to bring it home. So, but anyways, let's get started. I use this little tool here. And again, <clears throat> You know, I blending, and I learned this from Felix uh, when I first started on his videos, he really does a great job of organizing his paintings and his, his paint. So we'll try to mimic something that he does here. So we'll just take a little bit of this one, a little, and it's okay if, you know, a little bit of the colors from the other one go, because we're gonna be blending them anyways. And then we just bring some white in each one. And then we blend. And depending on, you know, what kind of project you're doing, you don't have to completely over blend it, but you know, something like that. And here I'm gonna use a paper towel just to sort of, and I have a paper towel and a bottle of water here. I forgot to mention those, but it's this one, you see this one's a little more purple than the other one. I hope that shows on the <clears throat> on the camera. Kind of does. And you could do this painting with oil too, guys. If you have oil, go for it. Oil is awesome. People ask me all the time, what do you like better, oil or acrylic? And it's honestly whichever one I'm using, I like that one the most. But oil is a little bit, you know, it's messier and... Um, but it has its, its obviously its loveliness as well. I mean, it's oil paint, which is amazing. I recently used pastels, which are like fancy crayons. I really like those too. <clears throat> but any kind of color is dope. All right, so that's a little bit kind of a little play on the sky here. And I'm gonna move this over. I don't know if maybe you get a better idea here. It's a little bit in the sunlight. And I like to keep the actual colors there as well just because um, I will dip into those as I'm doing the painting. And that's pretty much what we need for the sky. I might add a little bit more of the white here. I use a lot of white. It's a great blending color. And I know for those of you that have been painting with the wet on wet technique, um, that's a really awesome technique because you have white on already on the canvas and it blends. But I'm not doing a wet on wet. We're just going on a regular old dry canvas. And, you know, right now I'm looking at it and I, I want to kind of go next level because we're, we're doing this for Felix. So we're going to make some more blues here because we're going to go next level. And, you know, just feel free to, to, to mix any kind of, uh, you know, any of these blues together. There's no right ratio, uh, just a little bit of each one, and it just becomes your own. But I do recommend blending. And now, you know, we're on the shot clock because it's acrylic, so we'll get to painting it immediately here. 
All right, guys, as far as the canvas is concerned, I'm using an 18 by 24 um, canvas, and this is courtesy of uh, Felix, and you can get these on his webpage, and I want to point out to you, it's a very thick canvas, and so um, I think you guys will like it, so let's begin. No real rule of thumb here, I'm using the number six filbert and just general rule of thumb we want to keep dark stuff closer to the top and i just like to swirl and so just you know i'm going just back and forth i'm going from the dark, I'm swirling it, then I'm com coming over the top with some of the light. And so, you know, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of do it until I'm satisfied with the way it looks. And if I don't like the way it looks, I'll just paint over it. And that's that. If it's, uh, or if you could scrape it off, that's cool too. You know, you just want to keep in mind that you want to have some lighter colored sky near the bottom because when you start to drop in the trees you need to have it a little bit lighter so the trees can do their thing so we'll just kind of keep that in mind by just reminding myself to just kind of put some lighter blue down here let me just go directly into the white that's okay too I started painting a couple years ago and I actually, what's really neat is two of my first paintings that I did were step-by-step -step videos from Felix and um, one of them was the red door painting. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. And one of them is the like fall meadow. There's like a little lake action going on in there. And my mom just loves that one. So she, I gave that to her. She framed it, believe it or not. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. And you know the I'm using the this uh, number 6 filbert for this. And there are times when I want more detail. And if you want more detail, you can do this little swirling technique I'm doing and change the brush and go to something smaller. I find if you go smaller, you get more detail. And so um, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I have, when I first started, I always would have kind of bigger brushes. And the more I paint, I tend to trend towards uh, getting smaller brushes just because I, um, you know, it's, uh, you get, you get more detail that way, but you know, this is just, uh, you just kind of go with this and maybe I, I emphasize my point earlier about if we were to blend the greens right now, uh, the seatbelt sign would be flipped on cause I'd be panicking. Oh my God, they're going to dry out and then we wasted the paint and I'm like, ah, oh, the world's coming to an end. I thought painting was supposed to be fun. This isn't fun. We're, we're having fun, so. And you know, sometimes you see here, this is more paint and it just, it has a cool look. And so I'm just gonna keep it that way. And I'm gonna kind of just keep going with that concept. You know, I liked how it kind of protruded off of the canvas there and kind of gave it its own little 
kind of neat look. And that's what's cool about having the unblended colors or just different colors in general. You can just come on the top. You know, that's kind of a goofy little thing there. I don't know. Maybe we'll come into it with some dark to, to show that there's something else going on in there. You know. For those of you that are trained artists, you might be watching this going, what the hell is this guy doing? I, forgive me on that, but you know, this is just how we kind of just did it and, you know, started doing it this way. A lot of swirls, everything is swirls. We're not really doing it in this particular painting, but sometimes if you want to do a really quick, fun ocean painting, you just take a piece of tape, tape it along wherever you want your horizon line to be, bring the sky down, take the tape off, and then you could start to play with the water and, you know, just a little idea. This blue is really cool. And as the acrylic starts to dry, you can kind of play with it when it's kind of drying too, you know, it's just, it's, it's way different than oil. If you've never done acrylic, it's really fun. It's just different. You don't need to rush it, you know, I think when you rush it, it, it'll it lose some of kind of what you're ultimately going for as far as some kind of impressionistic -y, whimsical -y kind of painting. And, and I haven't said this yet, and I think it's very important. Uh, it doesn't need to look like a photograph, you know. Um, I think when you, people start painting, they think to themselves, it's got to look like a photograph. And it's a, I think it's the opposite. I think you don't want it to look like a photo. I mean, it, realism and photographic art, believe me, is off the charts rad. But there's also something rad about having your own style and just doing a whimsical little, you know, quick shooter painting, you know? We'll forget about the ultramarine blue. That ultramarine blue arrives to the party and lets everybody know it's at the party. It's just really kind of, you see where it just pops, it's very dark. And I like to just kind of come, you know, just where you least expect it because, um, and I like some putting some of that phthalo in here too, on top of it. And it just, you, you know, dark is our friend in these pockets of sky. And at first you may think it, it doesn't look attractive right now because it's just kind of this, it, it, it's out of place with regards to the light, but it, it really adds to the depth of the sky, I feel like, ultimately. Oh, that was cool. I kind of messed that up. I like that. And don't be afraid to kind of drag, drag them among each other, you know? And you do that, and all of a sudden, you kind of get like, that's your friend. That's not a problem. You know, we like that. And you just kind of put it on here, and you see, whoop. I like that. That's some just deep little weird swirls that just adds to the painting. My roommate in college, C, who's gonna watch this and love this, but he, uh, I always share my art with him because he's such a rad artist. And he shared with me that he likes looking at all parts of the painting and appreciating the little details in the painting. And I, that had value for me and you can kind of start to see in here, if you start to look, it, you know, it's taking no time at all, but it looks, it looks kind of fun. And you see that little effect there? Again, that's thicker that we're just going right on the top. You just leave it alone. 
that's our friend. We don't need to keep blending and blending and then it'll look, we want different kind of things going on. Let's go back with some dark here and kind of just swirl it. Oh yeah, that's cool. I'll take it. Come back under here, gives a, you know, the, another general rule of thumb. You always see people that paint clouds. The bottom of the cloud is a little darker because there's the shadow of the cloud. And just kind of keep that in mind. And you know, if you run out of paint here, we go back and we make more, we blend some more paint. It's not, again, you know, it's not the end of the world. I like that. I like that. Take some of this ultramarine, it's coming to the party, it's letting everybody know. <clears throat> Forgive me, I'm trying to, it's the first time I'm doing one of these, so I don't have my setup that dialed in, but you can kind of get an idea of what how I'm just kind of grabbing it and placing it and grabbing it and placing it. And you know, I feel my brush is getting a little a little more stiff here and that's the acrylic letting me know that, hey, I'm drying, dude. So we'll have to, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wash our brush here and just keep, keep going with it. And you know, there's no rush. No rush at all. I also find a lot of pleasure in smaller canvases, you know, and, you know, you can, I try to do a little bit of art each day if I can, but with work and life and all that, you guys know how it is, but a smaller canvas too, you can get in a little project in a day. And guys, I want to point this out. You see this here? When this acrylic starts to dry, this is what I was talking about earlier. You start to kind of get a different vibe. It starts to swirl in of itself. You see, it's it's getting a different swirling effect and that's cool, you know? We're, we're in the kitchen when things are kind of setting off. There's no need to panic. You see, that's cool. If you start to look at the details, as my boy C would say, you see you're kind of getting cool. And sometimes I even clean my brush on the on the canvas. You know, it's a little, you know, let's come back with some dark up here. Let's not forget that. That's just kind of, you know, <laughs> before, <coughs> excuse me, when I would kind of get lazy and just want the sky to be done, I would grab kind of a blob like this. And, uh, but it actually is your friend, believe it or not. And, you know, you, you put it and you place it and you swirl it again, you're gonna get kind of neat kind of things. And if you don't like it, you can just come right back over. But that that's kind of neat. I think that adds something to it. And don't panic if you don't think that you're not getting enough light down here. Uh, we, we can just come back over the top with that and play with that. So no worries on that. that <clears throat> sometimes I'll be hard on myself and say that doesn't look like a cloud and then I'll be driving and I'll see some crazy clouds and I'll be like well if I painted it like that I would think that that's not real so don't be too hard on yourself nature does really rad things so you know 
you know, again, it doesn't have to look how you think in your mind. It has to look like a picture. It could just be these goofy little whimsical swirls. And, you know, I kind of like this effect of we have a, a little bit of a, a lighter cloud on, on top here. Maybe we'll even come over on top of that with something. That's kind of a cool little thing. I don't hate it. Come over the top here with some dark. At ultramarine. I don't know why I'm not too thrilled with that. <clears throat> I think we need some dark in here. What do you say? Yep. It's hard to tell, but within the swirls, there's swirls, and you know that's all on the paintbrush, you know, you, and, and it looks really cool. And by the by the time the painting's done, it, it adds to it. It's kind of in the background that is there and you don't really know what's going on. I think it's that time now to um, maybe adjust the brush here and wash the brush just because you can kind of see it's getting a little it's getting a little dry and kind of crazy but you just you know a good old-fashioned paper towel and I use just a water bottle. And you know, our brush is back to new and we get back right at it. I, I think one thing about acrylic, if you had to say it's better than oil, is it's so much easier to clean. When you, you just use water to clean it, it's beautiful. When it comes to oil, I still haven't found a good way to do it. There's paint thinner, but then I found the paint thinner destroys my brushes. Uh, if you guys have a good way of doing it, let me know because I'm just, I can't figure that part of it out. I'm just re-upping my paint here a little bit. I'm adding a little bit more phthalo. I'm adding a little bit more ultramarine. Again, I think if we're going to just do some very basic kind of blending here, we can get things kind of going. That looks kind of cool. Just a little smidge. Don't need too much. Like that. Okay. All right. We're back at it here. If I can kind of adjust this so it's a little closer. Just want to kind of remind myself that we want it light down here. And it will be light. And you can just come into some pure white and just to, oh, just to remind yourself that that's what that's going to be like down there.
Just swirl your heart away. Just keep on swirling. You see now that it's, you know, I now I have some dry on my palette. I have some uh, fresh paint and now everything's kind of swirling and you, you get really cool effects. That's something with the acrylic that I think is dope. You know, now you can make a decision, you know, and it's completely up to you. Do you like this area? Do you not like that area? I kind of like that it's a drastically different blue. I understand we have some natural canvas, so maybe just a little, like the French say a soupçon, or just a little, just a little thing like that. And you see the paint is just doing all the magic and it looks really cool and, you know, and you just move on. I, I think it's important to move on in paintings. Again, you know, you can kind of, you see that's um, maybe 10 minutes ago, we couldn't get that effect as easy. And now it's just, now it's coming. I like it. And if you kind of get into like a little bit of a rut, don't um, at all be hesitant to step aside and come back to it at a later time. That That's always, uh, you know, okay. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And You know, I, I didn't know what was gonna come of that, but I like it, and we move on. I find that the hand naturally will want to swirl in one direction. Uh, I I go counter uh, counterclockwise, but it, you can mix it up and you'll get cool effects. But one cool effect you will get when you do it in the direction that you're doing it, which for me is counterclockwise, it, it gives the painting a, a little bit of a the sky is moving, you know? There's wind, there's depth, there's something going on in that painting. So I, I kind of, the swirling, you know, in, in, in one consistent direction, uh, the tree will bear some fruit uh, when it's all said and done by doing that. Oh, yep, there it is. Yep. And like, some people might look at that and go, what the hell is that, bro? Uh, but I like it, you know, I like it. So we'll move on from it. I like that. I'm okay with that. My dog, I have a senior German Shepherd that I adopted and she's in the room. She just walked in. She sometimes wants to say hi. Hi, Pix. What's going on, dude? Hi. I hear you. Mm. I know. What's going down, dude? She's 
she just walked out of the room very <laughs> very independent my mom loves that about her Sky's kind of coming along, you know. I haven't really explained sort of how we get there, but we'll get there. I let, my paintings are always the same. I start with the sky. We want the sky a little bit lighter near once we get to where the land and trees and, and all that begins. And then we start dropping in the uh, trees and land. And what I envision here is we'll start with some trees along here. This will sort of be our tree horizon they'll be it they'll be further away so they'll be smaller trees of course as we come down in the painting that means that things are getting closer to us so things will get bigger and that may not be the artistic way of explaining it but that's how i tend to simplify it for myself and um and we'll have some water and we'll have you know some water down here and we'll, we'll see we'll see what it what it ends up being like i said we're not married to anything here as soon as it anything starts to feel like homework it it's not fun so okay okay that's okay it's different and i again i like i like these blotches of dark you see one here 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 that just let you know hey dude there's something going on that, you know, the, 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 the storm is alive. The storm is alive. And as soon as I said I go counter <laughs> counterclockwise, I started going clockwise, but okay. And you kind of see now when I said it's a play on blues, then when we get to the, the trees, then we'll have a play on greens. We'll have, you know, we'll be working with multiple greens and let them blend and all that like we do here. And then it kind of that impressionistic -y vibe starts to, starts to show itself a little bit. Sometimes by accident, I wasn't really thinking about my next move and I just put a lot of paint on the, on the brush and most of it is dark so i have to find a place that uh, i can put that and uh, maybe we go right here oh that that's kind of interesting My favorite boxing analyst of all time is Larry Merchant. For those of you, I know it's kind of random, but it reminded me when I said the word interesting. Larry Merchant one time was watching a fight. He was calling a fight, and the, the fighter came out, and uh, the fighter had a pacifier in his mouth. And uh, Larry Merchant goes, He's very interesting to me, <laughs> and I loved it. I always joke about that with my friend, but anyways. That's a kind of cool effect we got there. That was just excess paint. We didn't know what to do with it, and it kind of came to something cool. I mean, continue that, though. You know, I, I don't want to be repetitive but you know as as this acrylic dries it starts to it starts to develop something different and it's it's it gets drier it's easier to kind of blend and get these kind of crazy things now one thing i want to keep in mind when you start doing the swirling technique you, you it's okay to get carried away with it but just be mindful of kind of you want some dead areas to 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 have contrast with the um with the swirling well we're swirling away we still have all this area here so we're swirling i'd love to read your guys comments below if you have any kind of feedback or 
criticism or positive, negative, any kind of feedback is cool. You have a reaction to the art, that's cool. You think it sucks, that's cool. You think it's dope, that's cool. Anything is cool. I kind of like this area here. I don't know, but I don't know. I kind of don't like it either, so I don't know, or whatever. Okay. And that little thing there I did, I'm going to live with that. I like it. It's, again, one of those things where you say to yourself, in real life, I never see anything like that, but we're not in real life. And as you see here, you know, I'm out of... My paint has, I've used all my paint here. So uh, as far as of the swirling, so even when you drag your thing across it, it's not bad to, you're gonna get some cool effects by uh, by that kind of paint. You don't wanna waste it and there we go. We got a little something coming off the canvas. Now, keep in mind when your acrylic dries, it will look different than it does when it's wet on the canvas. And uh, it's not gonna change the dynamic of your painting, but it just looks a little different. Uh, when acrylic dries, it's not as detailed, I find, than when it's wet. That may be one of the perks of oil. Um, but, you know, leave comments below, because I'm uh, an amateur artist who's been painting for two years and has learned primarily through YouTube. And um, so if, if, if I'm off on that, let me know. But I, I kind of feel like that's a, that's a thing. I think it's time again. Uh, I don't want to get lazy here. Uh, we're out of white. If I continue painting with just these colors that I have, it's going to mess with our vibe. So I'm going to go, I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to add more white and, uh, and we go from there. Do some basic blending here with the white. Don't be afraid to just come over the top of things. And if you're not thrilled with it, like I'm not thrilled with that, then we'll just kind of go into some other, we'll just come over the top of it, just like that.
when we get that cool kind of the wind is is flowing. Don't be afraid to use the ultramarine and it, I, I just love the way it, it turns out and getting some of the phthalo then to come over the top of it really just adds depth and kind of cool vibe. And again, if you don't like it, you just swirl over it. <clears throat> so we're getting, to, we're, we're starting to get near the end of our sky and I find that <clears throat> this area right here needs to lighten up and this area that we go along here is going to start getting really light because when I want to put in these trees, I want you to be able to see the trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of this white here and maybe a smidge of the blue that's already on my brush and just kind of start to get a real whitey blue almost a you know the the more on the white than blue but you can see and we can start to just pull it down and i like that it's kind of fun Anyone, if you can, try to blend it a little. No problem if you can't. Just, you know. If you guys end up doing one of these, please uh, send it to me. I'd love to see it. That'd be really fun. Again, right now, I really wasn't thinking that much. I put... A goofy amount of dark blue and white on the um, on the on the brush so I got to find the place for it and we're coming light here I'm this is a no area so we're I, I, I you know sometimes I'm just gonna go over the top and not really think about it so just this area here oh I like it it's its own little its own little thing there and I think that looks really neat and you saw how that happened it was just it just happened it happened so I want to do another one that was fun I don't want to get carried away with it though you know I like this area here of sort of this modded kind of uh, dark aqua color I don't want to mess with that so you know I'm not I'm not in love with this area so we'll just come over the top with this one here and again it's just kind of this cool little blue swirl thing. If you guys have never done a Felix painting before, I highly recommend it. There's so much fun. You sit there for a couple hours and you just do a step-by-step. -step. I think it's great. I really do. All right. You should check out his step-by-step -step paintings. He has some seascapes that are really cool. There's one he did of a ship, uh, I remember, that I really enjoyed. And you know, sometimes the blues will, when you blend them with the white, will have a way of kind of turning purple. And that's okay. That's, that's, that a sky can be purple. When you said a sky can't be purple. And that's that. And I, I, there's texture of the, sometimes people are very kind and they comment on, they like the texture of my paintings. Well, that's just blobs of extra acrylic that are just sitting up like that, that when it dries, it will, it will, it will shrink and it gets its own little, uh, look to it. It'll be different than when it's wet like this. It'll, it has almost like a dehydrated-y kind of look, but it's cool. That's part of it. 
And the best part of it is it dries. And so it makes us doing the trees super easy as opposed to art, which, or oil, I should say that it's more, it's trickier. And you know, this is just the residue of what's on my brush. And this is kind of that light color I was talking about. You know, I could throw some trees on that and that's no problem. And you know, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And the more I do it around here and don't worry, you know, we're gonna put some sky here. Um, I'm not gonna do that there yet because we wanna maintain sort of this vibe here. Okay, I hate that, you know. That's something where uh, when I first started painting, I would be upset at myself for doing that. Right now, there's no problem. This is no problem. I like this color right here. This is kind of fun. All right. Welcome to the party. Like that. A little purple whimsical cloud kind of doing its thing. Maybe we'll come with a little bit of dark right here. Oh, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of fun. And we keep on moving. I use a lot of the white paint. I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I go through white paint more than um, any color that I used, mainly because I'm blending with it a lot. Uh, it's 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 a very uh, it's it's an important one, I think. And, and this is kind of where we want it to be, where our sky is kind of taking shape. Again, I like to just use the end of the residue on the brush and just kind of, this canvas can take a lot and you know, you, you just keep, and you just kind of, you can kind of clean your brush on it and just, you know, I'm, I'm using this white paint now and it'll catch some of this blue. Don't worry about how it might look goofy. I don't like that, but we'll come back and fix that. And you know, again, why am I doing this? because we want to be able to see our trees. Yeah, you can put the trees when it's darker too, but I think it has a more uh, fresh kind of look, you know, when, when, when it gets a little lighter near the bottom. And my brush is telling me it wants to be cleaned. Let me just straight up with some of this white here. Okay. Now, I want to give you guys some advice here. Um, you know, I, right now, when we start to think about, okay, our sky is done, and um, we're going to think about dropping in these trees, let's take advantage of the fact that we're using acrylic, and let's just let it dry. Now, you can get a, a, um, a blow dryer if you have one, um, but if not, you just let it sit for... Um, you know, maybe a half an hour to be safe. And it, it makes your your life easier. Because right now, if I were to come right over the top of this area where I have some white, it'll blend with the white and it, it may not be uh, what you're kind of going for. And it may be what you are going for and that's okay too. But I'm starting to now think about, we are coming near the completion of the sky for the painting. You know, it's... Uh, it's uh, whimsical and I, it could use some more dark in my opinion. Um, and so uh, maybe we're gonna add a little bit more dark. I, I'm, 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 I'm wanting a little bit more dark in it. So let's see what we can do. Here, let's come over here. Saying, call me, I don't like it, bro. I hear you, dude, I don't like it either. Well, let's see if we can fix it. All right. I don't like that, bro. It's too much ultramarine. The ultramarine came to the party. It's not liking it. Well, that's the ultramarine to leave the party here in a second. Some phthalo. Right over the top. 
well, let's take advantage. You know, there's parts of it I like, there's parts of it I'm not thrilled about. I like this part right here. And I, I, I kind of like the bottom swirl. So let's let's come over the, the top part of it. Oh yeah, that's it. Like that, boom. Did you guys see that? That was kind of dope. All right. And so now I, I like the little white line there of the cloud. And uh, I, think, I think the painting is telling me I want some more phthalo up here. So I don't want to get too carried away with it, but um, let me bring some of this in there. Oh, yeah. All right. Something like that. And it adds just some, some more complexity to it. I like that. I like how that turned out. Um, you may you may not like this part. It might be a little too dark compared to the rest, but I like it. I think it adds a mystery to the weather and how it's getting darker in the day. Um, impressionistic -y paintings, I find, if you think about the time of the day, it's my favorite time to play golf when the sun is going down. That's when you can kind of get the vibe of an impressionistic painting or on the flip side when the sun is coming up. But it's that's when the sky tends to want to let you know it's it's glory and it's it shines. So, um, all right, I think our sky. I think I said we're gonna fix this, so we're gonna fix that. Now that's coming near the bottom. We don't want to go too crazy, but you know what? We're going crazy. We're 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 doing it for Felix, so we're gonna go a little crazy here. I'm, I don't like this top part especially of this. Let's see what we can do here. Oh yeah. Okay. And maybe just a little bit of the white here on the bottom to kind of blend it. Oh yeah. Okay. And I think I'm done using the phthalo here because I'm thinking it, remember, we're, we're going lighter. And so um, I think our sky uh, is pretty much complete. Something to keep in mind. When we start to do water, the water is going to be the same color as the sky with the exception of the shadows of the of the trees and, and whatnot. So... Um, you know, if, if your paint here now dries up, then, you know, this this paint looks like it's it's uh, gonna be able to hang on. Um, but if it does dry up, no worries. You remember what blues you used. And we come back for the water at that point in the painting and we just, um, we, we, we go back to those blues. So no reason to panic. And uh, now we're going to Go back to some blending. We're gonna blend now the trees and the land and we'll get started with that part of the painting. All right, now we're going to mix the paint for the trees and the land. <clears throat> and this is my favorite part. Let's get some emerald green. It's got a really cool color. Let's get some sap green. Viridian, which I have a love-hate relationship with Viridian green. And hooker's green, which is awesome. You can do a lot with that. If you don't have on this one, you can always do yellow and black. We'll make some kind of you know, chill green. And then we obviously get our yellows. Lemon yellow, which is beautiful. If you've 
never used when they know. <clears throat> and we have some blue up there. Okay, so let's start to blend. And I think that, again, I like to keep my base color, but we get our, uh, we don't want too much here. And I'm gonna, on the green, I'm a little more sensitive than I am uh, about the sky. So I'm, I will clean my uh, little palette knife here just with a um, paper towel, just to kind of scrape it a little bit. this and let's do some yellow what do you say so we'll take some of this yellow we'll come over here and that's just awesome we're gonna have fun with that one I love that that is really I don't want to waste any of it so kind of do that technique and then this green here is kind of it's kind of dope and I want to see what it looks like with some of this some of this. So we'll come over here with this. And let's see what we got. Yeah. We're getting our greens cooking here. I just realized that you can't see that. And that's not cool. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Now you can see it. Okay. Um, let's grab some of this. This. It's going to be darker. It's my favorite one so far. Let's not waste any of it. I'm gonna add a little white to this one, and you'll see this go. This gets a depressing kind of green. Not that depressing, believe me. I've seen worse. All right. And, and now I, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna clean my palette knife and I'm gonna I'm gonna live on the edge a little bit today and we're gonna take some of this very little amount if you saw it was just literally a, a scratch we'll get a little these are we're getting our light highlighty kind of colors which is which is actually good to do that I'm, I'm happy about that decision and uh, now we're gonna come back to ultramarine. Remember I told you it's always at the party, man, ultramarine. All right. It's all a little different, which will add to the complexity of our landscape. So that's all, all good. Um, now, uh, we want to have some darker greens as well so let's take some of this let's come with some of this phthalo and let's see what that gives us yep i'm into that why not the french ultramarine wants to get in on it some of this Maybe some of this now we're just getting kind of we're getting a little crazy okay so so we have a couple of darker greens here. Let's just come with some of this. Let's see what this does here. Okay. It's a little darker. Um, let's come with some of this. And maybe some white. Maybe here. Okay. Um, one thing that I think is uh, very important is to have a base color. And by base color, I mean you take uh, some uh, whatever brown you have handy here. I'm going to use some uh, burnt uh, umber, which is also cool for um, tree trunks. I'm going to take some raw umber as well. And we're going to need some red, any kind of red you have here. I'm going to use this, what's called a scarlet. I like that red. Put that on some flowers over there. And um, we're going to need, uh, I think that's good. I mean, maybe a little bit more phthalo here. I'm, 
we're gonna use this phthalo here. Okay. So by base color, I mean the, the, the what your trees, when you make a tree, you want some dark background before you start dropping lighter colors on it. And so it's important. So we'll take some of this blue. It's a lot of blue, but I'm okay with that. We're gonna take some brown and we're gonna take some of this red. And let's see what it gives us here. If it's too brown, this is more brown than I want. It's way too brown. Earlier, when I first started painting, uh, that, would, that would piss me off. I wouldn't know what to do. No problem. We're gonna work. It's like if you've ever made a homemade mayonnaise and you bring it out of the refrigerator, how it breaks down, you have to slowly bring it back. Same thing with this, you bring it back with this. So, shout out to Jacques Pepin, one of my favorites there. All right. So, you see how it's darker there? It's darker on that side than on that side. We're just adding blue and we'll keep doing that. And it'll just pull some of that. And that's it. That's, that's kind of our base color. It's a little on the blue. Maybe we just add a little bit more of that. And I think it's okay for a base color. That's it. And so now we have a couple base color, a couple different base colors for the dark trees. We also have some dark here that we can use. And um, I think we are ready to start uh, applying this to the canvas. And I think, uh, you know, we may come back for the water once we get into some water. It, it starts to come together very quick. So uh, let's, move it over to the painting. All right, I'm still using the number six filbert. And now we're gonna start adding some trees. Gonna come into some of this uh, base color that we had done, this darker base color right here. And let's start to put in some trees. My favorite thing to do is trees. So let's come over the top here with some trees. Okay, I like that. The painting itself will kind of dictate to you if you like them, you don't like them. Yourself and pick any of your highlights. I'm just gonna pick one of these kind of more more chill, not as bright one. This second one right here kind of looks like a ninja turtle-y kind of green. Something like that. And you know, it's, it's far off in the distance, so we don't need to panic about, you know, about that much detail. But you know, I want to add a little dark here. Don't forget, dark is your friend on trees. It's your friend, so. And I kind of like that, and maybe even, you know, a little bit more here. Okay, I think that's okay. 
as somebody who's been doing this a little over two years, I still am always challenged by where the light is coming from in my paintings. Don't overthink it. Just add light and enjoy it and add shadows, you know. I'm going to come into some of this brighter yellow here and just so our trees all don't look the same. Oh yeah. Being kind of conscious of where I want to add. I mean, if you flatten out your tree like I just did there, you could add some more. No problem. Let me keep it moving. Let me add a little, some of this, uh, this color right here that we did, this vermilion-y, greeny one that we made. We can come over here and maybe have a big tree here. This one is a big tree. But it's kind of far away, and so we're not really tripping about too much detail on it. I don't trip about too much detail, period. I gotta be honest, but especially on this. Okay. And now I'll just pick a different green. I'm gonna take, now I'm gonna go with this one that, that I made right here. And we're just gonna be mindful here of, I want this to, if I can, I want it to look like two different trees. And how do I go about doing that? I go about doing that by working the outer perimeter of the tree. So first we're gonna do this one here, the one that's closer to us. You know, if I can get it, okay. And for the one behind it, I'm just gonna pick a different color green. So now I'm gonna go more towards this uh, kind of camouflage looking green and see if and work that perimeter of the tree. Oh, it's a little more aggressive than I wanted, but it's cool. And we want to maintain some of this dark here. And now it kind of looks like we're working a couple different trees and um, we, we maintain a little bit of that dark area there. I kind of like the way that looks. Um, you know. Just pondering how I want to kind of manage this here a little bit. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a smaller tree here to kind of give this a little vibe here. Oh, well, you might be wondering why I did that. And just to give myself a little bit of guidance. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of guidance in the painting. Maybe come with a, li a little bit of a lighter color there too, just to maintain our guidance. Here. Don't know yet what we exactly what we're gonna do with these, but we're we're cruising along. Maybe like a little distant tree here. Maybe a little distant tree here. some kind of weird landscape there to be determined. <clears throat> All the trees don't have to look the same. This one is a little bit more of a, you know, Christmassy looking tree, a pine tree. You know, I like to do them in pairs and I like to always have a bigger one and one next to it that's a little bit smaller that looks like it's behind it. I do that with my shrubs. I do that, you know, it's just kind of a, a little bit of a cheater's way of getting a little bit of a depth perception in your paintings. And just when it's just a little smaller and it's, it, it kind of, you see, it gives it this vibe of like they're not all together. And the same thing I said with these over here, let's try to maintain each of their integrity. So, you know, just with the same brush, I'm not even cleaning it, just kind of come over the top of this one here, maybe keep a little bit in the back there. And you know, I, like, I like keeping that in the back. And maybe we'll take a different green now, you know. And we'll just come over here. 
and this green, just so you guys know, I'm using this green on this one and previously I used this one. So, you know, we're just, we're jumping around. Don't worry if you cover up too much of the dark like I just did, just come back over the top. You know, acrylic will let, you know, you see it kind of just has these little effects um, on it. edge of the tree and trying to maintain some of the integrity there now I think uh, one thing I'm gonna try to do here and it's ambitious of me I want to try to do something this little archway here to um, make it look like uh, there's something going on so I'm just taking some of this vermilion which is uh, this one right here and uh, the little blend I had Let's see okay Almost did a little U shape, and uh, it's like I got it's like in and out, boom. Same thing with there. You see a little U shape, and uh, moving on. I haven't forgot about these distant trees here. We got to do something with those. What are we gonna do with them? I don't know, but we got to do something with those. So. Maybe we could do some kind of little distant hill. We'll take some of this here. Uh, you say, Kami, don't ruin the painting, bro. No, dude, don't worry. Or we got a little distant hill here that gets some kind of cool effect. Maybe just, just a little bit of yellow, boom. A little, a little distant hill, boom. A little left, a little right, and, and you all of a sudden, um, you give it, this little bit of uh, love here. Let me see if I can make that angle a little bit better. It's kind of hard to tell. Pixie is in the house as well, but. Again, with some of this green going. Kind of creating, just by doing that little swirling technique, this little distant uh, hill here, and we'll do the same thing with here. Okay, a little distant hill. And I'm gonna adjust the lighting, guys, try to make this a little bit better. Thank you guys for staying with me on this. We're getting later in the afternoon here so we're just trying to make sure the light is going all right but just want to point out to you how we did this here just one technique of going one way with one color one way with another green and you can just pick the green and kind of go crazy with it we'll add more details as we go along here maybe we'll put a tree right here not too big because this is this is far away and we want to give the impression that this one is really far away. So barely kind of tap that. I kind of like that. Maybe it has a little partner with it there. Remember, I like to do things in pairs and in threes because it adds to the painting. And now we're gonna just take any of these greens. I think maybe we'll try this one right here. And uh, give them a little bit of uh, trying to maintain the integrity of each tree. Oh, the tree got bigger and it didn't maintain its integrity, but that's okay. We'll just, it won't be as little as we wanted. No need to panic. There's some more trees. Kind of like the idea of having a big, big tree here and then things kind of falling into the valley. So let's see if we can do that here. Let's do a big tree here. We can. Something like that. And you might be saying, call me, what the heck are you doing, brother? And I promise we'll make it work. I promise. We will make it work. We want a little bit darker here. We'll get more our primary, our primary dark here. And what are we doing here? 
Let's kind of just keep that as it is for the moment. Actually, let's hide. Let's reward ourselves right away. Which one do you guys want to use here? You tell me. I mean, any of them really. I'm going to show this tree some respect and clean my brush. Just wipe it down. I'm not dipping it in water or anything. Just making sure I get a lot of that dark base color off of it and start to give this tree some love. Now, I don't want it to be too bright. So maybe kind of this, I'm gonna use this kind of pastel -y green here, right here, okay. And again, same general principle, light taps. I told you guys all those brushes at the beginning and you can see I've, I've done all the painting so far with just this brush. But we'll change them up here in a moment. But again, just tapping, you know, I like how that kind of looks. Sometimes I hate how it looks. This time I don't mind it and just kind of trying to be mindful of the dark spots. Uh, you don't want to get too carried away with it. I kind of like always having a bigger kind of color in the middle of the tree. It gives the optics that it's kind of jumping out at you a little bit. And you know, this, I'm, I'm not afraid to go back to some dark, you know. I, I The dark on the trees is just very important to give, that, give it that look. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, this looks like this tree's only two colors. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that is true. And uh, I don't want to upset you, so let's let's add just a little bit of a uh, give it a little bit of life, not too much, not too much. I'm gonna be using this color right here, this color right here, and let's just go right up on the top here. I think the goal here, if we can, is that the light is coming in, and we're gonna get the. the the, the right hand top part of each tree. Now I'm sure some of you are art instructors listening or you know jumping through the roof at that advice. I'm sure there's better advice, but that's how I kind of do it. So you know we don't want to go too crazy with it, but we got a little bit of light coming in here. There we go. Just a little bit of light. We don't want to. Like I said we don't want to go. We don't want to go too crazy. One of my favorite comedians, Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney says, you know, you should have fun, but not too much fun. That's kind of what we're doing here. Okay. All right. I'm okay with that. What do you think? It's kind of a, uh, I like this. This, uh, this is, I like that. I like that. And as far as uh, what kind of tree that's going to be, that's to be determined at the moment. I'm not sure exactly where this is going, so we're just going to keep that as it is. Now, I think it's a good time to change uh, brushes here. And I'm just going to, you know, just give another brush a, you want to, when you use acrylic, guys, I know it's, you, you run the risk of ruining your brush if you don't at least just rinse it with water when you're done with it and putting it off. And then if you want to really work it over, you can, but um, that's just my advice on that. I think now we're gonna get into some water here. That's kind of where my mind is going. And because of that, I think we're gonna use a little fan brush here. And We'll see what we can kind of accomplish with that. I'm going to go into some ultramarine here and some of the cobalt, some of the white, some of the phthalo all together, just all mixed on my canvas, on my, uh, on my paintbrush here. Maybe even a little bit of thing here. And we're just going to go boom. How's that? Okay. Let's get a little bit of white here. Let's go back and boom.
it's kind of cool looking. At first I wasn't thrilled with it, but I actually like it. So we're gonna keep that waterfall. And just with the same brush, haven't done anything yet, let's just kind of do this. And uh, we'll kind of see what the landscape is dictating to us. And you know, right away, uh, the landscape dictated to me that we have another waterfall. And so now we're gonna get serious here. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint to my palette. And we're gonna add some of this cobalt blue here. Okay. And I even Cerulean is great, everything. I'm re, remember we talked earlier about getting crazy with the blues, and now we're going back to the blues. And this is later in the day, so I'm, I'm re applying my blues, and I didn't waste any paint. This beautiful paint. And all right. So now we're ready to kind of get crazy with some waterfalls. And I think I'm just gonna take a little bit of the dark and a little bit of the white. And I wanna show you guys how I do this. I go just a little bit into the dark, a little bit into the white, and it looks something like that. And, and I think there's a little waterfall right here. Give it some, give it some effect. Maybe there's one over there that came into that. And as we get closer to there, it becomes a little less apparent what's going on. But that's just a cool little auxiliary little, um, and with my other brush, I'm gonna keep this one handy here for, for a moment. And with, this time I'm gonna use the number 12. Filbert, and we're going to come with some different kind of vegetation. Again, my base color, which was that dark that we made, and just kind of come over here, give it a little taps to kind of look like there's some vegetation going into the waterfall, like that. How hard was that? All right, and we're going to come just with some of this green, like that. Again, be mindful of your edges. Very light tapping. And this bush wants to have good space. There you go. Something like that. And, you know, I'm thinking we have some land here. It's flowing along. And let's see what we are able to do. We have to kind of think about what we want our, uh, our our water situation to be and where we want to end it. And um, I think we have to give it another waterfall, in my opinion. The day is not complete unless we give it some waterfalls. So I'm going back to my fan brush here and I'm just gonna go we're gonna do this together. I don't know what I'm doing, to be honest with you, but I know it's gonna be a waterfall. So I'm gonna take some of this white. Let's just get some different blues. Let's go back into the white and we're gonna let, let this fan brush just work its magic here. And we're gonna come right here. And that's that. Something like that. We don't want to lose all of that. And something like that. And then maybe we'll just come back. Up here, something like that. Something like that. 
well, I think uh, I hate it. And so, you know, I'm not tripping. I think we just need to have a little emergency surgery. I'm good at emergency surgery. I'm not panicking about it. I think that we're just gonna make this into some land because I just don't like it. So again, my technique with land is think of a, uh, if you if you were to draw an N that's pointed, a lowercase N, make it pointed one way we're going one way, one way we're going the other way. The worst explanation ever, let's go at it. Boom, like that. And then you go the other way. And you can kind of create some land there and try not to kind of mess with our tree. Something like that. And we'll give that land a little more integrity. This brown that we had made that we weren't thrilled about, maybe we have some kind of a little rocky area here that there's some land in it. You know, just to give a little different look to our painting. Maybe we'll come in like that brown, dude. No problem, brother. I'm gonna come right over like that. And come over just like that. Okay. Well, I still kind of hate it. I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. I don't like it. And so what we're gonna do, I'm happy that this is happening. Meltdown in front of the world here. I'm gonna scrape it off the canvas. I don't like it. No meltdown. No need to turn on the seatbelt sign. We're gonna just try it again. We're maintaining the integrity of that tree. And uh, we're gonna clean our brush here. And we're gonna try it again. And this time I'm gonna go lighter. I'm gonna take this color yellow green and just kind of see what we can do with some of this land here. Maybe it's wrapping around up there and it's kind of coming here. Okay, that, that looks okay. That looks now like it's some distant land kind of in the sun. And now we can just take some of our hooker green there and just kind of come over the top and it's just, it's a little better. I don't hate that. Why not? And have some land there. And if you if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if it's bugging you a lot, you can kind of just come over it and take away some of the the glisten and that U technique you see, you get those kind of details. And now we have some distant land and I'm I'm actually pleased with it. And we kind of fixed that and now we can make a, a little bit of green down here for our waterfall to, to play with. And then and I just took a little bit of the green, the the hooker green. Mixed with some of that, uh, they call it emerald green over here. And we could just tap on that just to give it a different kind of look for now. And that's that. Something like that. We'll play with that later, but, you know, just to give us an idea of where we want this to kind of go. Kind of thinking we should get some land here. So I'm just going to take some some of the yellows and just kind of mix them and it becomes dark, but that's okay. I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to keep that there like that. This is what I just call painting. You know, you just, you, you're just, you're pushing it along and letting it kind of dictate what you want the, uh, kind of what you want the painting to be. Pixie is also here. She says hello. Hello, senorita. What's going on? Hi. Say hi to the world. Say hi to the world. I hear you. What's going down? So I have a little bit of this yellow and this uh, green here. So let's just kind of keep in mind, maybe we do this here. Okay, I like that. And we keep it kind of dark back here. Maybe we just tap that and give it a look at some distant trees or something. Okay. I 
think now is the time I'm going to start incorporating in some of this, uh, this red and this, uh, this yellow here. And I want to make like an orange with that. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to take some of this. And as you see right here, and maybe just some of this, uh, some of the red. Some kind of orange. And this will help us here. You don't even have to clean your, your last brush, but just to kind of give it a little bit of a, you know, just a little bit of a color, a little bit of a pop. And we're gonna take some of this light green again, again, and then just come over the top again up here, just to kind of create some different fun landscapes here. Maybe we have a little weird plant up here. Okay, something like that. You guys like that or no? Something like that, some distant, you know, tap it, work it. You know, you get all kinds of cool little effects up there. Yeah, I'm not really crazy about that, so we're gonna come back over the top. We're gonna do a tree up here. I just didn't like it, sorry guys. Sometimes look, you gotta make an adjustment. You don't have to make adjustments in life, you make adjustments on the palette. It's no problem. Something like that. Yep, I like that. I like that, and I think we're gonna kind of mimic the same color of this one, so we're gonna get some of that emerald. Come over the top like that. Well, I'm getting carried away with it. I got carried away with it. Don't do it to him. Don't worry, you can come right back. I'll fix it. Sometimes the mistake ends up being a blessing and I, I kind of like it. It's, it's far away. We're not really tripping about it. And, you know, with regards to shadows and stuff like that, we can come back and adjust that. Come light here. Yeah, kind of something like that. And you know, they're not traditional trees. They're like giant kind of shrubby looking things, but I was pondering putting in a trunk and now I've, I'm not going to do it. I don't think it's necessary. And, you know, I think it kind of has a cool look. Here we have two up here, and maybe we can even add one that's a little further out. Just a smidge, you know, just kind of the, we, we get a little a glimpse of it, something like this, you know. Just a little further behind that one, we maintain the integrity here. One way we can increase the integrity of our shrub is, uh, and I did just say that, is uh, we come over the top with some light here, and then we have the dark over there. Could be my billion dollar t-shirt idea maintain the integrity of the shrub on the t-shirt oh, that's the only idea folks all right and then we just i'm just i'm just dipping into the greens here again going along the outside okay and we're going to maintain that dark area because that kind of gives us this little goofy kind of effect and uh 
Yeah, maybe in some of the dark can kind of be a shadow. Did you guys see that? That just kind of happened and we can kind of do the same here. And that's kind of how we're doing this. This little area here, you may wonder, well, what is this? Is this, what, what's going to be with this area? And I, I think that we can just add life to it. You know, we can add a couple of these little, you know, kind of these kind of trees and nothing really crazy, you know. Something like that. And uh, as far as the detail on them, maybe just a little bit of that vermilion, that dark green vermilion and, you know, kind of, I don't want to get too carried away with it, but something like that. And you kind of have these little distant kind of trees and to be honest with you, this is my favorite way of painting. You know, whenever I paint, uh, you drop in the sky, then you drop in the trees, and you you do it. And um, I think that that's kind of my favorite way of doing it. Right now, just with the leftover I have from doing these, I'm thinking maybe I, I add a couple of those uh, in the distance here. You know, just with my dirty old brush, just like that. And, you know kind of something along those lines and you know you can decide if you want to add water here I think we're gonna have water coming in through here like this and so we'll have we'll, we'll keep this as some land and just again I, I think we're gonna go back into some of that orange that I made same dirty old brush guys oh, no we're not tripping and just one way and then the other way and you just bring it back like this let's go into some of that light green and uh just to give it a little bit of contrast and you know and you kind of just curl it up and to kind of give it like oh it's kind of far away you know like that kind of a thing and if you're not really thrilled about it you can add some little shrubs and plants. Maybe we add a little, we add some shrubs along here like this. If you're not really thrilled with it, but that works. A lot of these little dark shrubby things. Okay. Kind of like the idea of taking some of this brown, both browns we had and, you know, something like this and literally creating like a kind of a cliff. So something like, like, you know, bring it up like that, bring it like that, you know, something, something like that. Like a little bit of some kind of a canyon-y kind of a thing and we can get our base color to kind of help us with the just some of the shadows that you know we think about that's just our base color the filbert brush and just kind of kind of attacking it if you want to kind of give it a, a more I think maybe we take some of this pointed yellow see what this what does you know something like that I don't know if you're crazy about that I'm not too thrilled with it but if you tap it it, it mutes it a little bit and it kind of looks like some of the grass has made its way up the hill like that something like that I'm not crazy about it, to be with you. but you know see what we can do to fix it take some of this light green to yellow maybe we come Gives it a little bit of a, again, that kind of left to right kind of technique. I feel like it's coming down too much, so maybe we're going to come back up here and do this. And then we'll get, grab some of this orange, just run our dirty brush through that orange. 
and do something like this. And it gives it like a cool little whimsical valley kind of a look. And if you want to really mix it up, I'm, I'm gonna just put a tip of that red, you know, and you just kind of brush it there and it gives it a little darker kind of composition -y kind of a thing. And then we go into some of the green again, just dragging things through now. This is how I like to, I just call this painting, you know. I don't know what this is. Felix, you tell me what this is, but I just call it painting. And so now we kind of have like a distant valley. We have some trees up there just hanging out. Purposely, we don't have a lot of detail. We just know they're kind of dark. Um, and... Uh, I'm I'm liking I'm liking our landscape so far. It's 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 coming along. Take some of this green, whatever one I. If you look at my palette, it's all kind of blended together now, and maybe just some little. Now we're going up and down, just to give it a different little feel. And just take some yellow. Yellow is cool because you go over green with yellow, and it just it looks like the sun is just hitting it, and it turn it turns into a little green. You see this? You can just go over it a couple times, and next thing you know, the, the land is kind of telling you what it wants to do. And I'm liking that. I'm liking that. I think now we can start to maybe put in some lighter land up here and we'll come over the top with some trees, what do you say? Just take some of our yellow and some of our green. Just slowly brush our way here. You know, this, this Filbert brush, the more I use it, I just love it. It just gives this, you see what I'm doing. I'm literally just going up and down with the filbert, my dirty filbert. And it's just, um, it, it creates these just kind of fun little things on its own, it feels like. I'm just going to take some yellow here. I like this dark area here. And uh, let's start to just kind of create some land here. What do you say? Something like that. I have a little bit of this yellow still on here. I think I'm going to come over here and do something with this. Yep. That works. How do we have one here? You know, we have kind of this green. Maybe we hit the water with a little bit of it to show that the trees are reflecting in the water. Okay. I think now is the time to wash our brush and take a little break and let everything kind of just dry and settle. All right, welcome back. Take some more of our base color. Start to kind of think about the composition here. I'm thinking of having some more of these kind of round shrubby trees to kind of cruise on starting here with a big one and then going around so let's see what we can figure out <clears throat>
made a celebrity appearance. Hello, senorita. Made her some chicken and rice. She's in a good mood. You like that food or what, dude? And she left. All right, so that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the idea. <clears throat> and don't, like I said before, you know, we're not, you're not married to anything in this painting here, so feel free to be relaxed and um, change it up if you want and have different kinds of trees. But this is just kind of my general rule of thumb, you know, that I like to do these kind of shrubs is, you know, one's <clears throat> a little bigger than the other, and this one is behind, so the, the second one, which I'm pointing at, is behind the first one. So it's going to be a little bit higher and a little bit smaller. And that's kind of the general rule of thumb for the rest of them, higher and smaller as we go up here. And uh, it'll all come together, I promise. But, you know, just something like this. And there's no messing it up or anything like that. And, you know, something like... Maybe something like that. And we'll come over the top with some uh, <clears throat> some more stuff. But just so you kind of get an idea. And you know, if you're kind of tired of these, well, we'll do some we'll do some different kind of ones. You know, we can do these these kinds of looking things. And this kind of <clears throat> again, if you're a professional painter, you might say, "Call me. What are you doing, dude? You're violating one of the main rules and working." front to back when you should be working everything backwards for it. I hear you, but we're just doing it this way because that's, you know, that's how we're doing it. And sometimes for me, it's easier to do it this way. Just visually, I can kind of, you know, figure out kind of what I want to do here. And, but I think, I think the painting is coming together. I'm an attorney by day, and when I teach newer attorneys, I always tell them, you don't need to turn on the seatbelt sign for no reason. You don't need to start getting, you know, panicking. We got this. And we're kind of, you see here, these, again, the, the same general rule of, you know, you could have kind of a ball looking shrub or, or tree and the next one is going to be a little bit higher and it's going to be a little bit smaller and we just keep doing that <clears throat> it's probably not the most classic way to go about it but you know maybe take a little bit of just the yellow here blended with some of that color and give us some background land here. Nothing wrong with that. Take some of this emerald green. And we'll come over here. Give us a little bit of thing. Maybe we come over here and Something like that, perhaps. <clears throat> Hello, Pixie. And maybe some, maybe we'll come here with some of this green here. No real thought, just, we're just painting. Come into that yellow and that red. I think we're gonna have to do another blending session here very shortly, but that's okay. And I'll, we'll do some more blending here, but just some more trees here, perhaps. Starting to, the painting is starting to kind of take some kind of shape here. Let's come over here.
something like this. Something like that, maybe. <clears throat> I think we're gonna have to come up with a whole new set of greens that we're gonna now do when I was talking earlier about how we have a play of blues up here and then we're gonna have a play of greens. Well, this is but this was the first part. Now we're gonna come into some new blue, new greens for these little shrubby looking trees. And we kind of go from there on that. If there's any other trees you wanna kinda add that you know, you think would add to the painting, and now is certainly a time that, you know, maybe something like here would be nice. You know, we'll make sure it has a different kind of a vibe so it doesn't look like the rest of them, something like that, maybe. And that could be its own tree, but we'll worry about that <clears throat> later. Now we're gonna maybe make some little Put in some land here as we ponder. Maybe just some, just some yellow. And just tap it and you see it does all kinds of cool things. And don't forget about the other side of the tree because it's, it's gotta make some sense. I'm just using the, the uh, just the straight paint of yellow, you know. And if it messes with those vibes, that's not a problem because we're gonna come back and highlight it. But you see, I like how it, it goes between kind of that yellow goes between the <clears throat> these little trees here. I think that adds character to the painting when it's uh, when we have a finished product here. But <clears throat> I'm kind of digging it. You know, I'm, I'm not really digging this area right here. Let's see what we can do with that. Maybe we take some of our old green that's now almost completely dry because we took a little break and um, but it has its own texture and we're just playing with it okay something like that perhaps i you know i it, there is something to be said for uh, there is nothing in nature and it's okay to have areas of nothing i think that's okay I think now we're just taking some yellow and some of the, uh, I believe that was the, uh, which green was that one? That was the sap green. And again, just kind of think about the land here and kind of what we're trying to do over here. Maybe something like this. You know, just try to kind of create like a little secret area there. I'm kind of okay with that. And uh, maybe some more of this emerald with some of the yellow. So we have both of them on here. And this is thicker and that's okay because we're just kind of creating, you know, our landscape for our painting. Kind of give some taller grass. That's okay. There's goofy kinds of grass everywhere kind of trail it up there like that. <clears throat> now we have a few options here. Um, one option is, is we can make this land here or we can create a little water to come through this little valley here and kind of, kind of do that and to be honest with you, that really wasn't the plan, but I think the painting is kind of dictating. The painting is telling me that that's what it wants to do, so maybe we'll, before we start mixing, we'll kind of get, we'll, we'll get after a little bit of the water. And we don't have to go too crazy with it. And believe me, if I don't like it, I'll change it. Believe me on that. So, just cleaning my brush real quick. All right. And I'm just, I'm still using this filbert that I was using, the number 12. 
And the way I like to kind of think about it is, is, you know, this water here is going to be, this area here is a little bit uphill and it's coming into this valley here and then it goes along. So we can, we can do something here. So I'm going to just take some of those blues that we had left over and with, with some of the white. So they're all on here together and that's all, it, that's all it'll, that's all it'll need. And so if you kind of think about it, maybe what kind of a waterfall do we want here? You know, we can have a double waterfall. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So we can just kind of do a, okay. That's, that's okay. We'll go back and get a little more paint. And maybe we come back on this side of it here. That's what I meant by double waterfall. And if you're not really thrilled with how it looks, you can always kind of go over it again and you know, and kind of just, we do something like that, you know? We maintain some of the green, we don't get carried away just because we're, we're doing some water. And I think, uh, I think I like that. And it kind of explains how we're gonna get some water here. So maybe we start to play with the idea of there's some water here. Okay, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. <clears throat> yeah, think about how it turned green and that'll happen. And you know, you just come along here and we just come over that and see what we want to do. Kind of a... <coughs> Excuse me. some more of this blue here and we don't want to get too carried away with it but you know that's where I'm thinking that waterfall is gonna go and I'm thinking we just keep it something like that and if we get some of the white just go just go into the white and start to kind of give it some uh, Give it some character here. There we go. Something like this, maybe it tucks back there a little bit like that. <clears throat> and get some more just to sh uh, feel the blue. Not liking it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna clean our brush. This happens. No need to panic. No need to <clears throat> trip out. We just come here and I'm just gonna kind of scrape that if I can. Just, just if I can. Just as much of it as I can. And we're gonna have to come over with some more paint. That's all that is. So I'm gonna re-up on my canvas here with some ultramarine blue and with some phthalo blue. And some white. And I think that I'm gonna change my paintbrush because I think it calls for it. You know, as we're as the waterfalls are getting closer to us, I think it's important to change the, um, you know, the brush so you get a little bit of a different look. And I think this will do it here. There you go, something like that. How does that look, folks? Miss Pixie, how? What do you think? Uh, maybe something like that. Let's go the other side. Something like that, perhaps. Okay. And I want a little bit more white in it. I get that. And we can kind of just come over the top like that. <clears throat> 
You just kind of do something like that. Give it a little character. <clears throat> something like that. Okay. Let's go back into that white. And maybe just kind of do something like that. We can kind of figure out now what we want to do with this waterfall. And I, my opinion of it is, is what's that saying, YOLO? You only live once, kind of deal. Get all our blues, and <clears throat> we're gonna just come right here, and maybe this shrub gets sacrificed here, but we do something like that. <clears throat> and I even like to, you know, you can keep that, that paint there because when we start to put in the vegetation and it mix with it, that'll give it a different look. But I am okay with that. And I think I'm okay with that. Okay. And now we want to kind of figure out where our water, kind of what's the vibe of our water here. Okay, that looks kind of cool. But something like that. I'm not shy to mix all of a sudden my greens and my yellows. Everything is now mixed on here. And let's just start to kind of figure this out here. Just kind of do something like this. I want to just kind of get my bearings here a little bit. And went through there. Went through there. <clears throat> and, you know... You might be saying, call me, what kind of a step-by-step -step video is this? You're just freelancing the whole damn thing. And I wish it was different. I, I, that's how I paint, you know, or I don't wish it was different, but I, you know what I mean. We're just, uh, not talking too much, man. And, you know, and, you know, I kind of screwed up there a little bit. My water got a little <clears throat> too close to that kind of waterfall there, so... Um, I'm not really panicking about it though, I gotta be honest with you. I'm just gonna take this and go into my greens and just kind of create a little, it's okay. This waterfall has been around a long time and I think that that'll work like that. Something like that. And that water will somehow be behind it, but we'll figure it out. I'm not really panicking. And I kind of like that green, guys. I'm gonna go back into a little bit of this emerald green. And maybe some of the yellow and the emerald green together and just kind of create with just the fan brush. It's kind of messy and it's kind of not the traditional way of doing things, but we're, we're not trying to be traditional. And just with that same, now that it's getting a little lighter, that's perfect because it's the same as the previous landscape. And now it's, it's just kind of carrying us along and the fan brush is great guys i mean you see it just it does a lot of cool little things and i kind of like keeping these back shrubs that color we're going to come back over those right now but we're kind of getting this different kind of um watery kind of thing going on here and sometimes you know this the physics of this might be a little bit weird so we can figure out a few different ways of trying to handle it. Um, one way is to, is to do another waterfall. Let's see, let's, let's try to do another waterfall here. Just get a bunch of that paint and see, maybe you know, something like that. More of it. something like that and we come back with some of this dark colored grass the, now I'm just running it through all my greens that are on my palette here and it's getting we will come back over the top of this don't worry but just right now because remember we're gonna be mixing a whole new thing of greens here but we're just 
I'm in a rhythm here all of a sudden with this, and I'm liking it, so I'm going to go with it. And you guys are along for the ride, and I'm doing some silly stuff. This is straight blue, you know, and I'm putting straight ultramarine blue. You go call me, bless your mind. I know. You just gotta, like I said, I'm not turning the seatbelt sign on. If you want to turn it on, you turn it on. I'm not turning it on. That's it. Something like that. A little bit of a darker vibe. And my colors on my palette are getting pretty dry. But I, like I said, I'm in a pretty good rhythm here. And I'm just liking this green. You know, sometimes this leftover paint on a on a on a fan brush is such a lovely thing because you can just kind of come and start to just get all these cool little details when ultimately you may not have been getting them before. You know, something like that. And some of these blues now that we're coming down are, that's all right. <clears throat> I can't tell you guys how excited I am to do this video for Felix and really humbled that he asked me to do it and I know how awesome of an artist Felix is and so somebody who has little experience like myself for him to ask me I'm really flattered and really cool. You know, it, it, it kind of came together a little bit in the sense that I didn't, I didn't know it was going to go in this direction. I had a general idea of, you know, um, of, of, of the kind of landscape painting that I wanted to do for Felix, but it, 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 it kind of took on its own thing. And I had talked to Felix about how I improvise and but he said he wanted, he wanted me to do that. And so that's what you guys are getting. And I'm happy you guys get to see the process because it just it's so much fun and I hope you guys try it too it's made my life uh, um, you know I, I have a the, the sense of purpose I have with the art I just love it I just love it and I hope you guys get down on it I'm adding blue and I know you guys are gonna think I've lost my mind you're thinking hey you're being lazy go go mix the paint but I actually like how that blue looks and it adds a, um, that's straight ultramarine blue that I'm using here. I'm, I'm, I'm just using some ultramarine on the fan brush to kind of give it this dark, this little shadowy vibe. You know, these little, shr these little shrub plants here need shadows. Don't forget about their shadows. So people ask me, how do you do the shadows? You know, this is a cheating way of kind of doing it is by getting this ultramarine and you can kind of tell it, it gives it a little shadow and shadows do not need to be perfect folks they do not need to be perfect and so that's kind of kind of the vibe i'm thinking you know do i want to do i'm going to add some color and some land here no more, enough of the water and we're going to detail the water too guys don't worry we we're going to get a fan brush and you know, add add little white across here, and we're, that that stuff is coming. But so far, I'm on such a rhythm right now that I'm not. I'm calling an audible at the line. You know, I'm just adding some of this emerald green back to the palette. I'm adding some lemon yellow to the palette. I'm going to add some orange, the color orange, to the palette. And I'm going to add some crimson red to the palette. And I'm gonna come back with some of that sap green. Okay. And I'm gonna add some Cerulean blue. All right guys, just so you have an idea of what I'm doing here, 
I took just raw paint. You see the colors I just listed. It's that emerald green, some lemon yellow, orange. It's that crimson. Uh, there's that blue. And uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create some greens. We're gonna accent these. And I was gonna do a formal mixing session, but I'm feeling I'm feeling a good rhythm, so we're just gonna we're gonna go with it here for a second. So I'm just gonna take some of this emerald green with some of the yellow, and we're gonna create like a really the front part of this landscape is gonna be popping. It's gonna be popping. And I, I, I like the grass that I'm getting with this, and I'm gonna mix it with the orange and the yellow, just like that, and I just see what we can kind of, oh, it's curving. Look at that, that's how it curves. Something like that. And I'm gonna get some of that blue in there too, just cause we're getting silly. And I want the front of this painting to be kind of whimsical. And I think we're gonna have a waterfall here that goes here. So I'm gonna, I'm going to take some of this red and some of this yellow here and some of this green. And I'm gonna just come down here like this. And I kind of like how it the red gets weaker and weaker as it goes off, because that's how it would look in real life. And now we come back just some of that green, some of the yellow, and uh, got this tripod here, so we're trying our best. But you get the you get the gist of it. Just you know, this part of the valley is is kind of popping. And let's get some of that blue with some of this green. Like I said, we, going dark is always good. And what are you doing, Kami? Oh, I don't know. But we're doing something here. Again, no need to panic. Kind of something like that. I don't really like that. So we're gonna just come with the yellow and bring it to life. much red. I could get carried away with it. That's just emerald. That's some of that emerald. Something like that. our base color a little bit just let's get a little bit of dark down here and I kill some of this just blue and give it a little bit of life like that you might think this is kind of a mess a painting can be sometimes a mess and, you know, I'm not particularly thrilled with some of the stuff going on here, but that's that's how it goes when you're improvising. And uh, we'll fix it. We will fix it. But before we do that, we're going to go on a little waterfall journey. If you want to come with, we're going to go on a little waterfall journey here. And I'm going to need some 
some of the titanium white on my canvas. So this blue. And what do you guys think? Maybe something right here. Okay. We don't have to live with it, neither am I. Okay, maybe we do another one. Okay. Oh, we got a little green in there. I like that. That's okay. And maybe something a little shorter here, no? Okay. I'm okay with that. I'm just going to take whatever remainder I have of this blue. And I need a little bit more of the Cerulean blue. I want it to be bright near the bottom. You get some kind of cool squiggly effects with the fan brush and water and if you don't like it then I'm completely just kind of improvising here and you know and some of it's changing some of it's staying the same it's all good you're just painting it's mindless you want you want it to get to a point where you're just painting and you're not really thinking too much about it if that makes sense I know that maybe some teachers would advise against that but that's how I, I, I like to, painting for me is a, a sort of a release and I don't think about my day to day, I don't think about my work, I don't think about anything but painting. I'm adding more paint to my palette guys, if Cobalt Blue just made a celebrity appearance, Crubian Blue, and uh, we're flying through the Titanium White, that's always normal. So think that that's unusual. I tend to use maybe five or six times more white than I do any other color just because I'm always blending with it. And all right. We're gonna get some of this water here down here. Let's, we're just getting some white and on the fan brush here. We're kind of getting some cool effects, that's okay. You know, something like, something like that, maybe, I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Um, I think we're gonna need to come with some of this Thalo. Just, just, just hold, just hold, just right here, like this. I'm into that. And maybe just some up here. Pixie like that too. Maybe we, now we're just getting some white on the fan brush. Barely touching it. Barely touching it. You know, just to kind of get a little bit of the watermarks. Here, barely touching it. I'm not thrilled with that one, but okay. Barely touching it and we went right into our waterfall. So we'll come back into some of this green and we just create some like shrubbery around, along this waterfall here. And, and that's okay. And that's okay. And maybe we'll get some of this here. Maybe they'll even give us a little bit of a mark here in the water of what the green would look like. Kind of a silly little reflection, but it worked out. Okay, and you might be wondering, Tommy, where's the waterfall splash marks? I hear you do. And we'll come right up here, maybe 
even a little bit of a little splashy. Calls for maybe a little mini, a little mini waterfall. Maybe right here. What do you think of that one? Okay. Maybe a little mini one here. Oh, I don't like that mini one. So forget that mini one. We'll get some natural waves there. And that's that's how easy you can fix a painting, guys. I mean, it really is. Uh, you can, you can fix it and turn a mistake into a real kind of fun thing. Just again, just some white and I'm giving us a little bit of this line here. And maybe this leads into here like this. Oh, look at that. What happened there? All right. Something like that, perhaps. And uh, maybe we can do this here. This is all just tapping with the fan brush. And I kind of like this kind of this kind of goofy look here. Okay. What do you guys think? It has a uh, <clears throat> vibe. This is just me running the fan brush into the some of the paints just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a depth. You know, when you kind of have the light and it wraps around into the dark, that was not done on purpose, but I like the way it ended up looking. Maybe we come with this right here to kind of show this water is just a little over there too. And that's okay. I think I see. The more you kind of look at it, the more time you spend with it. There's always things you could do to it. Go have a cup of coffee, come back. But it's starting to take form now. I don't want to get carried away with the splash. You know, this is a... The splash here is not the star of the show. The star of the show is... I don't know what it is, but you don't want it to be the splash. It's just kind of low key. And maybe this goes along here. Okay. Hello, senorita. Pixie again has made a celebrity appearance. All right. This is just some darker green here, maybe uh, some of that sap green. We can kind of just come in here and before we mix some lighter, we're gonna mix some light greens to, to, to accent some of these trees here in a moment. But I think so far so good. If you guys have any suggestions about my painting style, again, please hit me up. Let me know what you think. I'm just kind of running wild with the fan brush right now and seeing if we can get on a little bit of a hot streak with it and just getting some additional de goofy details along here. I'm not really thrilled with that, so we'll come back and again, that's just some. Uh, not really thrilled with that either, but. 
Okay. Something like that. Alright guys, I'm going to now um, mix a little bit of paint and I'll show you guys um, what I'm doing with that and we'll get some paint for these guys along here and uh, maybe some some of the lighter colors will bring to, bring to life this area here a little bit. And I have some dark here, I don't want to get too carried away with it because I like kind of the vibe right now. I like it, there's a lightness to it. And I have enough dark, or yeah, I just put a bunch on here to see, but I'm I'm restraining myself from doing that. I, I like kind of this, the crimson element here, and the, the painting sort of took on its own life, and I, I like that. Um, to me, that's the sign of a, that, that I'm having fun is when my painting kind of takes on a, a look and I like it so we're almost there guys let's uh, let's do a little bit more blending all right let's get ready to blend some of the lighter color leaf colors for the leaves and I took my old palette this terrible palette canvas that Felix has is really convenient you just rip it off throw it away and we're right back to a brand new one really good I really like that for real and so now we'll just take our yellows and maybe we'll make our own blues what do you say and I think we're gonna take some of this phthalo here and let's see let's take some of this let's take some of this some of this and this like a literally that much. I mean, I'm talking like a smidge into the lemon. And there we go. A real kind of nice light green and with whatever is left on this, just the leftover, I'm gonna go into this one. Cause I don't want it to get strong. If I need to add anything, See, that's just not a green yet for me. It's too yellow. So just, I mean, when I say smidged. Now we have two different kind of tones of a green to go on top of our base color. And I think that is sufficient for what we're trying to immediately do here. And maybe we'll come back, but let's get after it here. I'm gonna to continue to use the number 12 filbert. So let's start with the darker one first, and then we'll come over the top with the lighter one. Small amount, guys, not a lot. And let's just start here. And it's okay if it's kind of blending with the back. And the general rule of thumb is you want it to get a little darker near the bottom. And I just have some of that phthalo that, from, that I've been using. If I find I want it a little bit more and you could just put it in, you see you get these different little effects. And we continue along here. And you don't want to kill all that dark. And we're going to come over the top with just some of the light. Not too much. Something like that. This is the lighter one here. Kind of just giving everybody a little bit. Back to the phthalo, and maybe we make these dark here. The phthalo blue, when you're using yellow, is just it's just it becomes like a really cool little green, and you see, and I like that. 
that has a cool little effect. With whatever is left on the brush, these are far away, so it's okay, and it's the same kind of color, and I like how it gets darker there. And Maybe we'll even take some more of this thalo and kind of just poke around a little bit here. Okay, something like that. What do you guys think? Okay, I kind of like how it turned out. It's not traditional, but... And then again, we're going into the... the a little bit of the darker one and we'll keep that like that and and if you notice guys i didn't completely blend both of them they have swirls and i understand sometimes you see people paint and they're just using the tips of the of the uh of the brush but i have a there's a mini no, i'm not swirling it but the fact that it's not blended the paint's not blend uh completely blended into one Gives the painting more, more, uh, more love is the word. And I kind of, you got to keep dark near the bottom. That's when you look at trees, notice that they get darker near the bottom. And this is just from the same, whatever was left. One of that, first that darker green. And then we'll come over the top with that lighter one to kind of make it pop. Then there it did, it popped. All right, something like that. And why not, maybe we'll give some love to these little plants that are along here. You know, just like that. That's just with whatever is left over on the brush. And we continue. Again with the, this is a little bit of the darker one. And then we'll come over the top with the lighter one. I'm not really thrilled with how that one kind of turned out, but it's okay. I think the phthalo blue and some of the just yellow on the brush and I just and I just poke it. I think it'll be fine. Yep. I like this little dark little thing there that's good and again I'm, I'm just going into phthalo and yellow on this one and this is going to be further away so maybe a little phthalo here and I'm going straight blue and because there's already green there it kind of just gives it a little bit of a love there maybe some along here on the bottom of the of the of the shrubs to look dark and don't forget about this guy back here this guy saying what's up dude well, i'm here brother and we are here and that's that i don't want to go too crazy with it again if i did go crazy i'll come with some of the phthalo and the phthalo is just really bringing it right now on this painting and i love it and then don't be afraid you know to have your trees in front of one another. You know, I always was scared to do that for whatever reason. And it adds to your painting, get some more of this light. And we'll just come right over the top here to give it this little look. Yep. Something like that. And you know, maybe on the ground a little bit. I'm not too sure about that, but okay. Something like that. It's far away, so we we don't have to get we're 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 being forgiven. And we can go into the light. Um and maybe come over here and give this guy some barely tapping, barely tapping. Barely tapping. Barely tapping. And all of a sudden you have these little, you know, it's now it's the, the, the brush is doing all the work, but you're getting these fun little plants and I'm just riding it out. Just, it's like a surf, it's like surfing, you know, just ride it out. Okay. And it's, it's giving the painting more kind of character, I feel, by doing that. So now, you know, our trees, we got, got some love I think we should 
this area here needs a little bit of uh, vegetation, so maybe this plant here is saying, hey dude, what's, I don't know. I hope you guys tried this painting. I think it'll, I think you guys will have fun with it. <clears throat> and maybe something like that. Okay. And I'm just using these two colors and this uh, number 12 filbert brush. And really the, I always found that painting is a lot easier than drawing for me and I think a part of it is when you start painting, you realize, wow, the brush kind of takes care of a lot of stuff. And people are like, oh my God, what a painting. You're like, oh my God, I didn't do anything. The brush did all the work, man. But okay, I'll take the credit, no problem. And I'm just going back and forth with the phthalo and to the green and just creating, you know, now that it's, it's acrylic and it dries, you can come back over the top of these little areas here. And, um, and you know, I like the dark. You want to keep these darks don't uh, they add complexity to the painting I like how this little pathway kind of happened here and uh, <clears throat> maybe just a little bit of tapping along here Maybe you want to put a little tree here and all you need, you're like, I don't feel like mixing paint, call me. I'm tired of mixing paint, dude. That ain't no problem to do that. That's just stay low. That's just stay low. And some of this light green, you know, really light, you know, and you just get a little something going on there that wasn't there before. And maybe we do something here. Hello, Senorita. That's Miss Pixie, that's my dog. Hello, Senorita. I'm gonna really quickly put the tripod on her for you to see her. It's gonna be hard though. Say hello. She's like, I'm good. All right, back to the... Pixie, you got a celebrity appearance. That was strong. All right. Hello, senorita. What's going down? I'm doing a video. All right, so let's go back at this. And I think over here, I'm just mixing whatever is on these two here. You see, I'm just blending them and it's kind of just tapping away and it creates these little these little things that I think look interesting and we're getting the paintings coming together now I think we're almost home I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, just a couple of these little things here maybe and just you don't want to overdo the reds when I first started painting, I go crazy with the reds, but you know, I, just a little bit to make it pop. And you know, whatever is on your brush here at the end, it adds some complexity to do these little things here. And uh, I think maybe we're almost home. Really what's left is some detail in the water and pretty close to having a painting. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the titanium white and we're gonna take some of the cobalt blue.
and maybe a little bit of that phthalo. And we have some of that phthalo. Okay. And I'm going to use now what is the little flat brush just to maybe get some details on the water. And I like to press it into the paint here. Oh, let me show you here. I like to kind of press it to kind of get an edge. All right, that edge. We can just start to come along here and give some details it's for the water. If it gets too aggressive, I have the cobalt here just to kind of delete it a little bit, but I kind of like it kind of going back there like that. I like that. And don't forget about the little kind of whatever is, whatever we need here. Okay. A level of zero out of 10, I give that a, I give that about a 0.4. Okay, let me brought it back a little bit. And okay, something like that. I'm not really thrilled with that. And so maybe we come here with just some of this darker paint there. I like that. Give that a little bit of an interesting look. Like that. I have a little bit of this dark and some of this white here just to give this a little bit of a perspective here maybe okay something like that Sometimes when you're using this flat brush, maybe the corner of it for here, you know, like. Something like that. Maybe something. Maybe something like that. And. I'm not really thrilled with this little area here, so I'm just adding a little phthalo in, uh, just to kind of cover that. We'll come over the top of some of that green. There. Okay. Something like that. Some yellow paint here and just kind of kind of just tap around and goof around a little bit here. Okay. Let me come over the top of that with some of that phalo. Just using this, just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of depth. And along here, I think you guys can tell I'm making this up as I'm going, and 
you know. I had an idea in mind, but it kind of just became its own little thing. <clears throat> kind of have this area in the front here. And we have options of what we want to do. We could put a little, we could put a little plant here. So, I have to do a little bit of a, add a little bit of the uh, hooker screen. It's harder to do it with this little flat brush, but I'm just doing it because we're near, we're near the end here. I'm just kind of goofing around. sort of the orange red color and I think a little vermilion is due in the paint. Take some more vermilion. I know I'm conventional with a flat brush, but we're doing it. And I think now we come back with some of the, just the darker green, maybe, and maybe just a little bit of this there, like that. I think I, I think I need a little bit of phthalo blue in it, just. And it kind of gives that little area some integrity. It looks like it's some kind of, you know, bush or hedge or something that's going on there. And I'm okay with that. It just, it, it looks like it's part of it and that's okay. And, you know, you could always give more detail to the water. I like how as it's going out, it's calmer. And then as it, near the waterfalls, it gets a little crazy. And, uh... There's areas of calm, it's not all crazy. I think that's okay. And I like how it gets kind of lighter here. And I think overall, 
It's in a it's a landscape painting in a in an impressionistic style. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you try it. Please leave any comments below. And don't forget to check out my uh, art page, Kami Art, on Instagram. You can see the link below. And definitely check out Felix's painting instructions. They're the best. Thank you guys so much.